Hey everybody, it's Tyler with Tapper. So happy to be with you guys here today. And we're going to be doing a knife that's a little bit different than what I've done in the past. I'm taking a production folder and uh, the guy I'm doing it for wanted me to take the scales off and make it a little bit skinnier because it's kind of a chunky knife to carry around in your pocket. As far as the actual model of this knife, it's a Bad Blood Persian folder knife. Uh, seems to be a really great quality, especially for the price. I think it was around 50 or 60 bucks when he got it. For me, getting them apart is always the easy part when I go to put them back together. Sometimes these can be a little bit fiddly, especially getting the washers back in. So taking my time and really looking at how everything gets taken apart. He gave me pretty free reign on this. He just said, make it so it's thinner. Uh, so I knew I wanted to use some veneers just to try and get as thin of a scale as possible on there. Settled on this one. I've been wanting to use it for quite a while. It has a really cool pattern, a lot of chatoyance to it. So went around, started marking out marking it out on there so I could cut it apart and then I'll get a couple other layers together and make laminate out of it for some strength. So I made a pretty big misstep here and see if you guys can spot it while I'm gluing it together and clamping it up. So if you asked yourself why that dummy didn't put packing tape on both sides of the wood when he clamped it together, you'd be right. It's really kind of sad because I've been looking forward to using that veneer for quite a while and what happened was, you know, I didn't put packing tape over that other side of it and it just, enough glue squeezed out through the veneer that it just glued itself to that other side of that. So it's back to the drawing board again, I found another piece and this time you can see I'm using packing tape on all the sides. Now the other good thing that I learned from it was that um, I did want to make it at least one layer of veneer thicker on there. Those scales didn't have much of any rigidity to them, so I'm using the figured wood on top and I'm using wood with directional grain on the bottom and I'm putting those perpendicular to each other so their strength against bending and cracking in all the different directions. This was something I was getting paid for but I still wanted to make sure that it has some longevity and some durability to it. The easiest way i found to cut this stuff out is just run it all through the scroll saw, get through it really quick, and you can get it relatively close to the dimensions I want it before I put it on the knife and then sand it out to get the final fitment right. Surface prep for the epoxy on this one I thought was especially important because with the liner lock on there there's going to be a piece of metal moving back and forth. And I was worried that over time that might deteriorate the bond between everything so make sure to uh, give it a lot of good tooth with some sandpaper and then clean it off really well with some acetone. Pretty much all my projects I use a two-part five-minute DevCon epoxy. Um, I've never had it, had it go bad if I've prepped the surface correctly. With this one, I'm doing one side first and then going back and drilling the holes. I'm putting this piece of tape under there. That way, when I drill through, I'm not going to get any blowout of the grain on the bottom. And you see, I put that piece of wood block under it, again, to further prevent blowout. Especially with that thin of a veneer, if I did get blowout, it would be really hard to repair. So it's time to rinse and repeat for the second half. Can you get in the same five minute epoxy putting it on there? This is the tricky side. I had to put the blade in just to space it out so I could clamp it down. And this is the side where the liner lock is and there's a little pin that has to go in there and it's glued inside under the scale. At this point I thought I was just going to be finishing up the wood, uh, putting the rest of the hardware and then be done with it. So uh, right here I'm coming in and I'm putting some different kind of two-part epoxy in there. This is one that's more used for like composites and things like that. I really want to make the grain pop. Coming back in, drilling through the holes, cleaning all that epoxy out of them so I can thread stuff into them, and then flatting, flattening out the whole thing. After I had it nice and flat, I put a test finish on it, and the grain really wasn't popping like I wanted it to, and it was okay, but there wasn't really anything grabbing me in it, so I decided to try some, just try some experimenting on it. So, if you ever hear whistling in the background, it's probably from what this feather came from. We have an African gray parrot. I thought I'd try putting a feather in there and epoxying it down. Now in hindsight, I really wish I would have put this on the other side, but it turned out a lot cooler than I thought it was going to initially. And on that side, the clip goes right over quite a bit of it. Anyway, so I'm putting some more of that two-part epoxy over the top of it, and yeah, basically it's getting it down. I ended up having to use a couple of coats. I sanded in between them just to get it nice and smooth over the top of it. 
So all that dried stuff that you saw a minute ago, that those are hydrangea blossoms. My daughter brought those in to me last year and they've been sitting in the garage forever. I thought they were kind of cool, waiting for a project. So I use the DevCon two-part epoxy to first stick them down just like I did with the feather. And then I'm gonna go back with the composite two-part epoxy and make the top coat on top of them. While that first stuff cured, I wanted to put it and make sure that they were all flat and stuck down really well to the base, so that's why I'm clamping it down here. At this point, it looked like quite a bit of a mess, and I was wondering if I did the right thing, but I figured I'd go ahead, and worst comes to worst, I could always just sand down through it and go back and try something else. So onward with the finishing coat. One thing that worked really well is I put a couple of little dowels in there. They're actually kitchen skewers. I was just filling in some little tiny imperfections after I sanded it. And it worked really well to keep the screw holes clean. So one more final sanding to smooth everything out. Now I'm mixing up a batch of 2K clear. It's a two-part automotive-based clear coat. It's turned out to be really durable. I've been carrying around actually this knife. I haven't told the guy I've got it done. He's a buddy of mine. Now he's going to know. Uh-oh. Anyway, I've been carrying it around for a couple of months, and man, it's just, it's held up really well. There's maybe a few small little surface scratches, but man, not really much. So, on to the challenging part for me anyway, which is getting everything put back together. Got to, had to clear out some of the threads, getting these washers in place, and in there, man, I was futzing around with this for probably 15, 20 minutes to actually get it, get it together and getting it working, but... In the end, it got back together and worked just as well as it did before I took it apart, so I was pretty happy with it. So Tim, your knife's done. If you ever want to come pick it up, <laughs> you know where I'm at. Uh, thank everybody else so much for coming and taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, I'd love a like, I'd love a subscribe, and otherwise, I will see you guys soon with some more videos. Thank you.